Servants Heart. Servants Heart. Welcome to the podcast. Inspiration, motivation, take. Servants Heart. Listen to the podcast. We're all about to talk about life. Our guests will share their life story. We want you to success in life and business. We're ready and we will start shortly. We're gonna talk about life. We're going to speak on business. You're gonna shine bright. We are going to witness business with our servants' hearts. Servants heart. With hosts Steve Ramon and Ray. Ramona. Inspiration, education, talks. Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. I am so thrilled to have you join us today. This podcast is dedicated to exploring the idea of doing business and life with a purpose. Approach your work in our lives with a servant's heart. Because guess what? You can make a difference. And don't you all want to make a difference? Wait to hear my guest talk about making a difference. She's going to blow you away. We created this show to motivate you, inspire you, and educate you to make that impact in your world. And while you're listening to this unbelievable guest, art and mental health is our is our topic today. Amazing, huh? She's doing some great things. Think about how you're going to serve yourself today. Got to start with yourself first and how you're going to serve others today. And what impact will you create today? Keyword I'm going to circle virtually is today. I have people still coming to me going, you know, I heard you and I waited a month because I didn't do it today. Start right after you listen to this incredible show. Start today. Just make an impact with somebody. Just serve them any way you can, and I guarantee you're going to feel great. If you don't, reach out to me and tell me how it didn't make you feel great, and we'll talk about it. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by our incredible partner, Pantheon Alliance. Imagine being part of an exclusive community of high-income, successful business owners and entrepreneurs from very diverse industries, and together they're building a thought leader platform to impact and change the world. If you want more information on this community, reach out to me and I'll get you all the information. As I said earlier in my monologue, we're going to talk about art and mental health. You've had a number of guests about mental health, but this is such a unique way of doing it, doing it, of healing from it, getting better from mental health. And guess what? Being a better person. I'm fired up to have my guests today. Carrie, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Steve. It's wonderful to be here. Art and mental health. Kind of give us a synopsis what that's about. Well, it's art therapy uh, and and mental health. So bringing art therapy, trauma treatment trainings uh, to schools. I work with Native American reservations, rebuilding First Nations people. I train the trainers. um, So that's the educators, the mental health professionals of schools, and they implement this uh, evidence-based, culturally competent uh, trauma treatment program within their classrooms. And then they're able to call themselves a trauma-informed classroom. But we're we're branching out and uh, going into war-torn zones and juvenile detention centers and prisons and um, other other countries. So it's really exciting. I was going to ask another question, but I got another question in my head before that. How's What's the result you've seen in prisons? Because I think there's a lot we can do in there to help them. I know they've done something wrong and I get that all the time, but I'm a God fearing guy. It's like, Hey, we always want to try to help and uplift people. What are you guys doing with the art therapy? Yeah, absolutely. So as a licensed art therapist for 24 years, we've developed something called neurodevelopmental art therapy. And when we bring Mm -hmm. this into schools, prisons, juvenile detention centers, it actually helps rebuild the disconnected or damaged neural networks, the neural pathways, that lead to the executive functioning part of the brain that's responsible for uh, decision-making, planning, understanding right from wrong, as well as empathy, uh, compassion, and wisdom. So in the prison systems, it's really important because probably as a history, a result of uh, history of childhood trauma, these uh, inmates have landed in jail because they don't have that executive functioning part of the brain online. So to be able, and then it you know creates a whole secondary uh, set of problems with low self-esteem 
and feeling ostracized from society. So being able to go in and help them feel human again, being seen, being acknowledged, but then also neuro rehabilitation. This is an evidence-based program that has three research studies from prestigious universities that actually is proven to rewire the brain from trauma. So being able to rehabilitate them as well in a real way that's uh, long lasting and really reduces trauma symptoms across the board. So we're, we're using that not just in prison systems, but juvenile de justice department, um, juvenile detention centers as a prevention and early intervention. So kids, you know, we disrupt that cycle of uh, ch children inmates becoming adult inmates. But even precursor to that, putting it into the classroom K through 12, which is even more important to disrupt the pathway for from kids becoming uh, incarcerated youth. Powerful message. Yeah, catch them before they become the, the juvenile, before they become the prisoner. Do you have any stories? I'm sure you do. Can you tell us a story or two of a prisoner that you've worked with and some of the benefits? Well, I haven't worked with the prisoners. I have other people that uh, I've Do trained okay. that are out there working in the prisons, but I did get clearance um, to go into one of the juvenile detention centers where my program is being used avidly. In fact, it's been so successful. They just got refunded by the juvenile justice department. So we're really trying to focus this and, and grow it. Um, you know, I had uh, I was watching one of the facilitators of my program um, and observing and I, I got to go talk to a young inmate. She was probably only about 12, 13 years old wearing the green scrubs and, you know, she was working with clay. And I said, so can you tell me why you're here? And she said, well, my stepfather was molesting me, so I ran away. And apparently it's illegal to run away. So that's why I'm here. This, this is the kind of thing that I see day in and day out. And it's just tragic, tragic. So, you know, we need to have a place for these children, you know, to face, um, you know, the, the traumas that they're uh, going through. We build in coping skills. Um, that help them adapt to bad situations. But, you know, the system itself is failing children. And we have something called system-induced trauma. That's one of the kinds of trauma, the many kinds of trauma that uh, people face as children, as adults. But system-induced is, you know, multiple placements in foster care. Um, it can be, you know, the uh, verdicts of court cases that are not investigated properly or missing and murdered indigenous women that, you know, women go missing uh, with sex trafficking, uh, what have you, and that's not investigated. And I'm part of the Native American fabric, uh, you know, and I see that all the time and I go to events for these kinds of things and just see the impacts of system induced trauma on families. And um, yeah, it's, we've got a very big problem in this country that needs to be addressed. Truly a servant hearts business. I love that, Carrie. That's why when I first met you, I was so excited to have you on because that's truly what you're doing. Yeah, it's a business and you're making money because that's what business does. But the value you're bringing is so much more than just the, the money that's coming in. The one question I did ask you, <laughs> you laughed, which you should have in a good way was, like me, I'm not really good with art. Can I get benefit from this as well, this therapy? Absolutely. And so the way this works, I'm glad you brought that up, Steve. Uh, art is really beneficial because it is shown through uh, traumatic research, traumatic stress research studies that trauma is stored on the right side of the brain. And art is a right brain activity. No matter what you do, if you're drawing stick figures, if you're using color, you're finger painting, whatever it is, you're imaging something and it's actually unlocking the trauma and, uh, and accessing that right brain trauma. And then when you bring language into it, that's a left brain activity. So you're creating cortical consolidation and dual hemispheric communication between both sides of the brain. So bilateral uh 
is really important for trauma symptom reduction, uh, but we take it a step further. So we bring in the social emotional learning piece as well mm. as the, the trauma, but art is about the process and not the product. We are focusing on just creating the visual um, and that's encoding on the brain and reprogramming it. And we use it in a way in neurodevelopmental art therapy. And this is very different than just standard art therapy. Mm -hmm. And it's very different than talk therapy because talk therapy only accesses the left side of the brain, doesn't even touch the right brain trauma, you see. So cognitive behavioral therapy, talk therapy, it just doesn't work. So you as a non-artist, non-artist uh, can definitely heal and just enjoy the process and not a, about making a museum masterpiece. That's yeah. not what it's about. So what I'm hearing from you, and I want the audience to hear this, anybody with trauma, with expertise or not in art, doesn't matter, can leverage this therapy to heal. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. And coaches can come to me and get trained on how to use the startup art therapy, whole brain healing system so they can bring it to their um, constituents or clients themselves too. So you can be a, a you know, do this on yourself or uh, help others with it. Yeah, that's one of your new courses. Let's dive in a little deeper into that. So I'm a business coach. And I get, how's that going to work? Of course, I get certified. How will I use it for my clients? Ah, well, in business, um, you definitely could help your clients because business is all about mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And so being able to guide them in a way that's taking them on a creative journey that's building that mindset and creating higher self-esteem and understanding themselves and self-discovery and self-expression. What are their fears? What are their blocks? And moving through that so they can get to the next level in their business. Uh, but we also teach coaches that are working, you know, that uh, wanna help and make impact, transform lives. And, and this is definitely a, a great avenue. That's the key word. And anybody in business should be transforming people. Whether, whatever that looks like. Can this be done online as well? Absolutely. I have an online course at startuparttherapy.com. So that's, you can find the training course. If, if you're a therapist, coach, educator, or school, you can bring this to your clients and students. Uh, but then we're just launching this new uh, course that's going to be online as well and will be published on our website very soon in the next couple weeks. Very, very cool. I like that. And I have it online, which means you, the whole world's your oyster. You could help anybody in the world. Absolutely. Wow. Audience, she's got it. This is a true servant's heart. Why do you call your therapy program startup therapy program? So or startup so, art therapy program. Yeah, startup art therapy, because when we're writing it, uh, start, we have the, the word art in there. And we're wow. using art to actually start up the brain. This is a bottom-up approach. So we start up that bottom part of the brain, the four functioning structures of the brain. So starting with the bottom, it's like the starter motor of a car. It ignites this little spark and then it just kind of kicks on all the other four functioning structures of the brain. So it literally starts it up oh, that's, with art. I mean, yeah, I'm looking at it. when you said that, like, there's art in there. Tell us, Steve. Hello. Very <laughs> cool. I love it. I love it. Why Native? I mean, I know why, but tell the audience, why is Native American you know, reservations kind of your focal point? I know you're going to go outside to education, but why did you, I think you really started there. What was the inspiration? Well, I've always um, been resonant with the Native way of being and spiritual path. And since I was a uh, teenager, I was doing sweat lodges and Native ceremonies. And I've you know, been 30 years now and um, really saw living on reservations, saw the poverty and um, dysfunction that has been created by colonization and genocide. 
and the historical trauma that creates intergenerational trauma and perpetuates it throughout, you know, successive generations. So uh, I ended up marrying into the Lakota tribe. I've been uh, lived on two reservations, very ingratiated in the community, very accepted. Um, and in the Great Plains region in South Dakota. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's so needed. And, you know, I have a little Native American blood on my mother's side. But I don't, you know, because in the Native tradition, you do not go and say, oh, I am, you know, I've got, well, my grandmother was a Cherokee princess. That's actually a running joke in Indian country because so many white people come and say, oh, my mother was an Indian princess or a Cherokee princess. So I would not advise saying that. So if you don't know exactly what the oral history is, what, you know, the connection, the name, everything, you don't claim it. So I don't go and claim that I'm Native American, but that is definitely um, part of why I gravitate to um, yeah. Helping this, and it's 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 a spiritual mission. It's not just me, right? Yeah. And I have a lot of helpers, uh, spiritual, um, spiritually, that that guide me. Yeah, I forgot that you were married to an Indian. Your it's your your soul. This is a soul business, as well as you know the business of value. Can we give an image to the audience? Uh, I've got trauma. I want to do startup art therapy. What does it look like for me to get started so people can understand a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, one, you can come to my website, book a call with me. It's a 20 minute yeah. free consultation. I've got uh, groups that I run as well, if you want to work directly with me. But now this new online course is for people that uh, are just want to get started. So they start with the acute trauma treatment intervention. It's a very low ticket item. Um, and then they can go on to the four stage chronic trauma treatment model and then um, to the uh, reprogramming for mindset and then recoding energetically for spiritual atta um, attainment, enlightenment. And yeah, it's very cool. I like it. Why did you become fluent in Spanish? Ah. Well, I've always loved other cultures. I've always felt more connected to other cultures other than this white culture I was born into. And there's a lot more to that. But uh, I started when I was 12 in, in middle school. And I became fluent uh, by the time I was in um, university. And I've traveled around different countries and now I'm about to relocate and uh, go live in a Spanish speaking country for the first time. Cause I can, I'm yeah. an adult. <laughs> yeah, so where, I'm excited. I'm about country, to Colombia, right. Colombia. Yes. Oh, wow. I've got a couple of partners there in Colombia. love Colombia. Won't get into that. They, I, I'm actually kind of looking at it. It's, it's, it's beautiful out there. It is. And, and you can fair verify this audio. It's safe out there. Both of them said, yeah, it's not the movies that you see. It's not the drug lords and guns running through the streets and stuff like that. So, well, that's very, very, very cool. Your yeah. mission. Um, I mean, not, that's not what I want to ask. See, I could even screw up. It's so good. Your mission and accessibility for all peoples and all ages. I mean, when we first talked, you said you some very young people using this that have had trauma up to very, you know, older seniors using it, which is so powerful. How do you see all that working? Great question. Uh, so we have, you know, people that buy our books uh, online and mm -hmm. they're using it in their um, preschools. Uh, they're using it in in the, you know, schools. I, I don't even know if people that I'm training or not, but it's for everybody, all ages, all cultures. Eventually I'd like to get this translated into a bunch of different languages. And in fact, the online software that I run my programs through, uh, it's called Experientify. And it's a gamification platform, but also has mm -hmm. the ability to translate uh, the courses into different languages. So that's really exciting. That's how one of the ways we can get this to other 
cultures. And it's so important to me because, uh, you know, everything is in English and, you know, the whole world has to run in on English and they kind of get left behind in a way when they don't know English. So it's really important for me to cater to other cultures as well that might not have access to being able to learn another language just so they can heal. Yeah. And I was going to say earlier, I wanted to say for you, what you said about learning another language gets you deeper in that. I didn't say it that way, but what I heard was it gets you deeper in your culture because you can go to Colombia and, and get a part of the culture, but not communicating with people you can't understand because you know, Spanish, you can get right. Is that was kind of your goal? Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very ingratiated in the Latino community sure. here in San Francisco Bay area of California. And um, yeah, there's, it's, it's tragic because you see people that are coming undocumented uh, I have very good friends that have amazing businesses and construction businesses, but they, because they don't have their papers, uh, you know, they're undocumented, people take advantage of them and rip them off. And because they don't know how to communicate with them, they don't realize how incredibly intelligent these people are. I mean, for example, my neighbor, he's running two businesses. He's got a two patents with the patent office and, you know, has created this incredible technology in, in concrete. And, you know, nobody would, would understand that because they just think, oh, he's just some, you know, racial slur, whatever they want to think, or they don't speak the language. But that's one of the things that has always been so important to me in speaking Spanish and not just Spanish, but because I have a base of Spanish, I can actually communicate to people in Portugal or Brazil in Portuguese or Italian. And it's and I just found out Tagalog in the Philippines is very similar to Spanish. I'm like, oh, my God, I, I can understand kind of what they're saying. So it's really a bridge, you know, to being able to uh, communicate and um you know, embrace other cultures and, and make relatives. You're amazing. You're just absolutely amazing. It's just impressive. The second time I met you, and you're impressing me more. I, I really appreciate that. We're coming to the end here, but you're doing so much and you're doing so much value. And, and what's the future look like for you? Well, um, the future, I'm going to be, you know, coming out with a lot more courses and really courses. focusing online because as you know, you know, and having a branch of my department uh, be able, of my business be able to focus on, you know, continuing chipping away at education and, and transformation in the education system, yeah. which is not easy. Um <laughs> Being able to have a lot more programs for uh, children, adolescents, adults, and elders, because we also have, I developed something for uh, neuro rehabilitation for stroke victims and elders, because that's very under addressed in our country. Um, so yeah, online programs and writing a book. So I'm hunting for a big publisher that's going to be, you know, able to uh, write a series of, of books. Um, and get out into the speaking circuit. Nice. Well, you're going to be very good at that, all that. So before we end, I always like to ask a very fun question. Not that we got too serious, but this is such a serious topic. Um, you've got a reservation at a restaurant, table of four. You're obviously going to sit one of the chairs. Who are you going to invite, dead or alive? Why are they invited? And what food would you order? <laughs> <laughs> I get I get to have one person. Three. Oh, oh, I get to invite three people. You get to invite three people. Okay. Or if you want. It's your sitting table. Bull. We would invite sitting bull. Okay. Sitting bull. Okay. We would invite white buffalo calf woman who is like the Jesus to the Lakota people. Um, and I think I would invite probably uh, Maya Angelou. And we would have buffalo steaks. I heard they're really good. I got to try one. They're good, aren't they? They're good. Really good. Oh, my God. And buffalo is leaner than chicken or fish. So that's what I hear. Too. Okay. Well, that's my meal for the week. You got me set up. <laughs> I love it. What a great group, too. Oh, my God. That's a fantastic group. Uh, 
I want to thank you so much. You've been an incredible guest, just a blessing to the world and you're doing more and you're really helping people out. How can people find you, connect with you and support you? Well, I would love any support because, you know, we definitely, you, you talk about all this money that's coming in that's not happening. <laughs> so we actually need the supporters, okay. uh, you know, investors, you know, want to make a difference and help us get out to the native children and tribal schools and, and other places too. So whatever their interest is, I can be reached at startuparttherapy.com. Or my direct email is Carrie, C A R E Y, at startuparttherapy.com. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much again, Carrie. And audience, do me a favor subscribe to the YouTube channel. And, and not the, you, the reason I'm asking you this is not the reason you think, is you have access to Carrie again. I feel you listen one, two, three times to a podcast, there's things that you missed that you might want to pick up the second time around, because this is powerful and this is for everybody. So it's just not segregated to a certain group. It's for everybody. The other thing too, is you can support family and friends. If you hear somebody that's got trauma or education, you can share this podcast and learn all about Carrie because she really opened up to all of you uh, and really just being authentic and, and just wanting to help people. And don't forget to comment on the YouTube channel any comments to carry, I'll make sure she gets. Critique this podcast, good or bad. Hey, this podcast for you. And if I need to change some things, do things different, I'd love to learn about those and just make it better for all of you. And as I always say, me and Carrie, we want to thank you so much for watching or listening to this podcast. We'll see you on the next episode of Doing Business with the Servant's Heart. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Steve. <laughs>